What's up guys, Tommy Bowie here from Movie Rewind and today I'll be reviewing Holby City Series 19. There will be spoilers in this review, so without further ado, let's get into it. The 19th series of Holby City commenced airing on the 11th of October 2016 and concluded on the 17th of December 2017 after 64 episodes. It is the largest Holby City series there ever has been and there's a lot to talk about in it for that reason. So let's get on with this review. Now straight away. Series 19 continues what Series 18 started with being one of the strongest series of Holby City that was ever made. I love Series 19, it holds a special place in my heart because I just started Sixth Form when Series 19 had aired, so after a stressful day at Sixth Form I'd come home on a Tuesday night and watch Holby City, so I have very fond memories of it. But Series 19 has plenty of dramatic storylines. I mean there are a total of three weddings in this series, each one ends in disaster, so that just tells you how much drama there is in Series 19. One of the major storylines in Series 19 is the hospital being at threat of closure. There is a proposal to merge Holby City Hospital with St. Francis Hospital, and I love storylines like this because it puts a lot of pressure on all of the staff, and they all have to come and come together to try and fight a bigger threat. And obviously, by the end of the series, everyone is relieved because Holby City stays and St. Francis will merge into Holby City. So I think I like that merger storyline because it's something that all of the viewers can get behind and it brings all of the characters together to fight a common cause. And then of course, this series ends with probably some of the strongest Holby City episodes I have ever seen. It's Group Animal Part 1 and 2. It's the hospital shooting episodes. And these episodes show that when the acting and when the writing are on top form, you have two 60 minute episodes, which are just pure gold. Some of the most amazing writing I've ever seen, some of the most dramatic storytelling I have seen and containing some of the most emotional moments I've ever seen in any drama series. So yeah, Holby City Series 19, it's a fantastic series where the writing and the storylines are always on point, but of course the storylines couldn't be what they are without the fantastic characters they have in this series. Now obviously I'm going to have to say that Series 19 is a big series, so there are tons of character driven storylines. So so I'm not going to have the opportunity to talk in length about all of them, so I've just picked out a few highlighted ones which I think stood out to me uh, compared to all the others. The first is of course Serena Campbell's grief storyline over her daughter's death. Her daughter tragically died due to side effects from taking cocaine and um, Catherine Russell as an actor oh my god, you feel for Serena during this storyline. Just you can feel this woman who is usually so strong and professional just overcome with grief and she just struggles to cope. And of course this grief storyline then leads into her bullying junior doctor Jasmine Burrows mistakenly blaming Jasmine for her daughter's death. That's a really done storyline as well. I think it shows that someone who is suffering from grief will often attack those who are around them. They don't necessarily mean it. They just want to put the blame on someone for their grief. So yeah, I think that storyline was done really well and some very good performances from Catherine Russell as Serena Campbell. And obviously another major storyline in this series, we have Dom's domestic abuse relationship with uh, registrar Isaac Mayfield. That is a very well done domestic abuse storyline. Um, at the time, there weren't loads of domestic abuse storylines involving same-sex couples. So I think Holby City did a really good job of showing that abuse can occur in any form of relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's just a, a heterosexual relationship thing. It can occur in same-sex couples as well. So I think they did a great job with that. Plus, I like the aftermath of that storyline. I like how it takes months for Dom to recover from that abuse, even if that's through him taking steroids in order to try and cope. It shows that someone who has suffered domestic abuse 
doesn't just get over it as the when the abuser's out of their life. It can take them months, if not years, to recover. So I think Holby City did a good job of showing the after effects of domestic abuse. And David Ames, who portrays Dominic, he did a great job with the storyline. We also see plenty of new characters turn up in series 19 who have their own storylines, one of which is consultant Matteo Rossini. Now, when Matteo first joined, I quite liked him. He was very charming. He was very kind of that Italian heartthrob who comes through the hospital, who all the ladies fancy. And of course, I really enjoyed his relationship with Jack Naylor, actually. I thought those two worked quite well together. For me, the downfall of Matteo as a character is when his wife, Nina, is introduced. Now, their storyline is actually quite a tragic one. The idea that their 10-year-old son went missing and they have no idea where he is. He's presumed dead, but they can't really accept that. And it shows them struggling to deal with that. Um, but I just find found them as characters quite boring for their last couple of months. And I can understand why they were written out of the series by the end of it. Um, Nina was an unlucky character anyway. She comes in as the new medical director and then, you know, she, she becomes a scapegoat for some quite unpopular decisions. Because of the threat of hospital merger, Nina has to make a lot of budget cuts, which include closing the trauma unit down on AAU, which leads to the departure of consultant Bernie Wolf. So yeah, Nina is a very unlucky character and I can understand why at the time a lot of people disliked her because, you know, she was made the scapegoat for a lot of unpopular decisions. But I just feel like more could have been done with Matteo and Nina. It's a shame they departed when they did because I feel like you could have done more with those characters just if you got a better storyline for them. We also see the return of several characters, which is always a great thing. We see former casualty character Lofty turn up in Holby City as a nurse. Now, I really like Lofty as a character. He was fantastic in casualty, and I would say he is better in Holby City. I don't know why, but he does suit Holby City better. Plus, I like what they do with Lofty in this series, exploring his sexuality a bit more, something which I think they were trying to touch on in casualty, but they never really did that much apart from the odd thing so I'm glad that Holby City decided to take the character in a completely different direction and explore his sexuality plus I do like his relationship with Dom um, it's one of those very will they won't they type relationships which of course keeps you invested because you want to see them um, admit their feelings for one another and get together so yeah I really like Lofty I think he was a good inclusion for the series and we also see the return of fan favorite nurse Donna Jackson uh, last seen in 2011 so she had had a six-year absence um, and she just effortlessly slips back into the role I don't know what it is about Jay Jacobs as an actor but she can just fit into the role of Donna seemingly without effort and I really enjoy Donna's um, relationship with Rick during this series. It's very much that kind of father-daughter type relationship and Rick takes her under her wing. So I really like the scenes between Donna and Rick. They're quite wholesome. We also see a wide variety of departures during series 19 because obviously series 19 contains so many episodes. So a lot of characters depart during series 19. And um, I like most of them, to be honest. We have Mo and Mr. T's happy ever after. Of course, Mr. T eventually finds out that Mo's carrying his baby, baby Hector, and after a couple of months of, you know, trying to work out their new family together, they go off into the sunset because Mo's got a new job. And I really like their departure. It was a good happy ever after, and they both definitely deserved that departure. We get Zosha's bittersweet exit. She gets married to Oliver Valentine, which is quite a dramatic wedding in itself because her dad, Guy, tries to commit suicide during the course of their wedding. And then Oliver basically says to Zosha, look, you want to progress with your career. You've been offered this new job in America. Go and live your life. So Oliver loves Zosha so much that he's prepared to let her go. And I really liked that departure. I think it showed two people who really loved one another, but at that stage in their life, they just both wanted different things. And in the series finale, which is a great Christmassy episode, we get Morvin Digby also depart. I really enjoy Morvin's exit, um, probably because we get cameo appearances from Arthur Digby. He, um, Rob Stella returned to the role to help Morvin's uh, departure and he kind of appears as this kind of figment of her imagination but I really enjoyed her final episode I think 
a character who had been through so much tragedy as Morvin did deserved you know, a, a good exit, and she definitely got one. So yeah, the majority of departures in this series are very, very good, and they're not all the same. There's a wide variety of ways people depart. Obviously, not every character is lucky enough to just have a happy ever after. Some characters have quite dramatic storylines, and some characters find themselves in the morgue. There are two deaths in series 19, and they are both quite shocking and unexpected. The first one is junior doctor Jasmine Burrows. You know, Jasmine, such a breath of fresh air when she was first introduced. And I really like her storylines in this series. She doesn't get a break. You know, she ends up getting manipulated to putting in a complaint against her mentor, Rick Griffin, which leads to his suspension. And then she gets bullied by her future mentor, Serena Campbell. So yeah, Jasmine doesn't get much of a break. And of course, just as she's starting to make progress, with her half-sister Jack Naylor, and I really do like scenes between the two, I wish we had got more of them, she gets stabbed by basically insane nurse Fran, who is trying to use Jack to her advantage, and that was a very shocking scene. I remember when it first aired, and I honestly thought, now nah, they're going to save Jasmine's life. They're not going to kill Jasmine off. She's barely been in the program a year. She's got so much more to offer as a character, but no, they killed Jasmine off. So I've got to give... Holby City credit for having the backbone to kill off such a popular character. So yeah, they did a decent job with her departure. And then of course, in the hospital shooting episodes um, near the series end, we all learnt the shocking truth that despite the fact that Jack Naylor was shot, despite the fact that Oliver Valentine was shot, it was Registrar Raph DeLuca who was fatally wounded and ends up dying. And I remember watching these episodes at the time. Of course, um, Joe McFadden, the actor who portrays Raph, was appearing in Strictly Come Dancing at the time, and everyone thought he was still filming for Hobby City, so it came as a massive shock that he was killed off. But such um, a heartbreaking departure for a character. I mean, he had just got married to Essie Harrison, and their relationship during Series 19 is one which is quite on and off, but, you know, they eventually got, ha got married and appeared to have finally found happiness, and then he got shot. And it was very upsetting. Um, it was it was very emotional, but it was also the perfect way to end off two very strong episodes. Because I feel like if no character had died, the episodes wouldn't be held as in high regard as they are by Holby City fans. So I think Killing Raph off, yes, it was the right decision to make those episodes that bit more emotional. Holby City Series 19 is a series which never loses momentum. As soon as storylines which were quite prominent in the early part of the series start to die down, such as Serena's grief or Dom's domestic abuse, new storylines prop up which are just as investing. You have consultant Rick Griffin being accused of medical negligence because a patient he was caring for died because she didn't get the correct medication and the patient's son is accusing Rick of medical negligence and it eventually looks like it's going to court Rick gets suspended and in the final episode of the series Rick gets arrested and is heading a to prison and that is a fascinating storyline because obviously as a viewer you're not really told who was responsible um Rick won't tell anyone where he was on the day in question or why he wasn't there and he he just makes it clear that he did tell a nurse to give them the medication but they can't find the nurse responsible so it's a really interesting storyline which definitely keeps you invested and then you also have um, the chemistry between consultant Jack Naylor and nurse Fletch. Um, now Jack and Fletch they really work together. Apparently the writers saw Rosie Marcel and Alex Walkinshaw um, offset and really liked the chemistry between them, so they decided to pair the two together. And I really like the scenes between them. They are two very different characters, but Fletch is the only one who's willing to stand up to Jack. And I think that's why um, Jack grows a fondness for him, because not everyone stands up to her. So yeah, I really like those two together and I was looking forward from this series what they were going to do with that pairing. Um, I was a bit disappointed in the end but in series 19 it works which is always a good thing. So if you haven't already guessed I love Holby City series 19. I think it's a very well thought out series. It never loses momentum. There are some truly shocking moments in this series but also it's the small things which make this series so great. It's the scenes of the staff in the pub 
or celebrating a wedding or celebrating a birthday or celebrating star a staff member leaving it's those small things which make it feel so real i think that's the one thing i have to praise holby city for so much it feels like a real workplace and these feel like real people you know even though that they're just you know characters in a medical drama series they feel like real people and you can relate to them and I think you enjoy a show so much more if you can relate to characters and I think that's something that Holby City does very well now by the end of series 19 it was very clear that a new era was starting a lot of characters had departed during the course of series 19 and in the last 10 episodes we see the introductions of a lot of new characters we have neurosurgeon Roxana McMillan Professor John Gaskell junior doctors Nikki McKendrick and Mina Chowdhury and the return of Frida Petrenko so it was very clear that by the end of series 19 the show had transitioned into a new era with a new cast was it going to be as good well you're gonna have to wait for my review of series 20 before then so anyway guys i really do hope you enjoyed this video please remember to like comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future and i will see you in another one see ya